is a lot of different things. On the surface, it's a very straightforward uh, revenge movie. It's sort of it's sort of like a yin and the yang of black. It, it's a companion piece to Black Rambo, whereas Black Rambo was like an inhale of all these feelings, then uh, Maddie's an exhale of them all. So it's it's much more emotional. It's much more extroverted. Um, and it's got a lot more of me in it. <laughs> I saw it from several di different angles. I, I was excited by the kind of um, fantasy almost aspect of revenge. The idea that it was in 1983 and it, it just felt like a, a mysterious world that uh, Panis was going to develop. Having seen Beyond the Black Rainbow, I knew he would do something totally unique. The character in the script was just so extreme, so out there, such a raging narcissist. And, and I, 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 what I was impressed by was that he didn't just, Panos didn't just create a villain. He actually tapped into and articulated some things that I've understood through a lot of introspection around the male ego and the heights and the depths and the depravity of it. In Black Ram on this movie, I'm sort of obsessed with the absurdity and the delusion of the male ego and, and how it will go to any lengths to like get what it wants and no matter what the, the, the consequences are. And even though I started writing this 10 years ago, I feel like it's taken on a whole new resonance since. It was one of the best experiences I've had on set. Me and too. I've made a ton of movies and it's almost 40 years, but I can tell you working with Panos and working with Linus and working with Andrea, you know, because Panos is a filmmaker that knows what he wants, it, it's very relaxing for the, the, the performers because we, we can feel liberated knowing that we're giving him what he needs and, and he's, he's directing us in a way where we can hit the bullseye. There's a lot of filmmakers you work with that don't know what they want, and you lose a lot of time, and it creates a lot of anxiety, and they're mm. fixing things that aren't broken. But with Panos, like, he, he, you know, we did a lot of wonders, and, and some of my favorite stuff happens in one, in, in one shot, you know, because it breathes and it moves, and mm. you have to have confidence to do that, which he has. There's something going on in film today which I kind of refer to as the tyranny of perfection, mm -hmm. which is that on the craft level and everything needs to be seen as utterly precise and perfect or it's seen as a uh, failure mm -hmm. and I kind of like rough edges on things you know so sometimes I would allow just those to exist and I find those more beautiful in a way. It happens when there aren't too many cooks in the kitchen when you don't have producers yeah. from studios the suits if you will breathing down your neck giving the director notes giving the actors notes and and not really giving them any faith that they can do this job because they have the vision. Yeah. Uh, when they get in the middle of it, then it, it, all the oxygen goes out of the room and then you're like um, caving in, you don't feel relaxed, you, 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 you're confused, there's too many voices, and then you lose the Super 8 feeling. The Super 8 feeling is when you are a child and you are in your backyard and you've mm -hmm. got that Super 8 camera and you're making a movie for no other reason than you love the movie you're making. You're not trying to like sell tickets. You're not trying to make dollars. You're not trying to like get an Oscar. You're just making the movie for the love of the movie, and, mm -hmm. and that's the Super 8 feeling. But, but you've got to have people who've got real stories to tell. A lot of people just want to tell a story and make a movie and be it hip and cool, and people are going to like it. And you know, it's got to come from somewhere. And even the process, the fact it's taken Panos this amount of years and this story's been cooking for the <coughs> time, you feel the consciousness in the piece. And I think that's what an audience feel too. They connect with, you know, the storyteller. We were lucky in this, in this situation because we had Spectre Vision yeah. who uh, protected us. Yeah, and they protected us. And that's why I stuck with them for so long because I got to know them and I came to trust them and I didn't want to go into my second film in a situation like Nick's describing where people are in there telling you what to do and sucking the life out of the room where you, you can't be creative. It really kills creativity. And so I knew that they would protect that and they did. Mm -hmm.